the verse of the introit of today's mass taken from the 26th psalm reads the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen fear is something terrible you know when we fear we have a mental anxiety because of an impending evil we experience an unsettlement of soul as a result of perceiving some present or future danger a story is told of a young chicken which was digging and picking in the garden when a cabbage leaf fell on her startled and scared she let out a squawk flew several feet and then ran with all the strength she could master another chicken asked her why she was running and on hearing the frightening tale that the sky was falling the second chicken began to run soon the entire flock was screaming and racing out of the barn yard towards the woods there they met brother fox who most kindly offered to let them in to hide in his den because the sky was falling well you can imagine the rest of the story brother fox had the most delicious chicken feed he could ever ask for you see few things are as contagious and catching as fear it spreads like a wild forest fire it unbalances it drives not only chicken but men to seek help that is more harmful than the thing that frightens them the fear of losing something or someone has made many today to be stuck in the rut of an array of errors philosophical moral and even theological because of fear all the disciples ran away when our lord was arrested because of fear saint peter denied his lord and master three times the same night however when they received strength from the holy ghost at pentecost they became fearless witnesses of christ even unto death if we must be fearless fearless in saying like king david the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear it is necessary that we walk in the true light that is that we allow ourselves to be enlightened by the true light with our hearts lifted up unto the lord with true devotion the sort of devotion we ask for in today's collect it is necessary that we abide in god in spirit and in truth and this has everything to do with faith and morals what does it mean to walk in the light and abide in god with regards to morals first let us see what its opposite to walk in darkness is those who walk in darkness are those who love sin and the world and want to live in sin by the world we mean everything opposing the kingdom of god everything the supernatural fails to penetrate the evil proud pagan and carnal society you see there can be no compromise on this point for as saint john tells us if we say we have fellowship with god 
and walk in darkness will lie and do not the truth. This will mean to live in a continuous lie. We must note, however, that to walk in darkness does not mean to fall occasionally into sin. To walk in darkness is to live habitually in sin and love of the world, that is, to love the evil, proud, pagan, and carnal society just as the swine loves dirt. This is the condition that excludes God's light and grace. To occasionally fall into sin is the heritage of our poor, wounded human nature. Indeed, St. John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, he, our merciful God, is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Indeed, it is written, a just man shall fall seven times and shall rise again, but the wicked shall fall down into evil. Now, to walk in the light, we must separate our hearts from any attachment to the world, to the senses, and to sin. It is for this very reason that St. Paul says, Bear not the yoke with unbelievers, for what participation hath justice with injustice, or what fellowship hath light with darkness? We must make up our minds for the battle required in a very clear cut manner. To walk in the light with regards to matters of faith, it's simply to believe with divine and Catholic faith all those things which are contained in the Word of God as found in the script, scripture and tradition and which are proposed by the church as matters to be believed as divinely revealed, whether by her solemn judgment or in her ordinary and universal magisterium. It is to use not one's guts or misplaced feelings, but objective Catholic principles in resolving questions arising due to today's anti-Catholic culture in all its shades. With such a firm adherence, we, with an unerring instinct and at a glance, can distinguish human inventions from the faith once delivered to the saints. And if we are to be Catholics worthy of the name, and wishful to be known as the most loving children of the church, as Pope Leo XIII will have it. Fearless, we will reject what is inconsistent with the so fair title of the Catholic name. Fearless, we will defend the integrity of Catholic saving doctrines. Fearless, we will defend, we will not connive in any way with false opinions and will never withstand them less strenuously than truth allows. Yes, ours is to recognize and reject what is inconsistent with the Catholic name, defend what is Catholic even to the death, to refuse to connive with false opinions, however quoted with all with an alluring finesse and never to withstand such false opinions less strenuously than truth allows to withstand them kindly and with a smile if possible the fact that we are all here today is a living testimony of our fearless and total rejection of the outright apostasy 
of the modernist Vatican II Council, together with its hybrid ecumenical pan-religion contrived from the pit of hell, and the hierarchy responsible for it all. That is, the hierarchy responsible for the convocation, promulgation, and the execution of Vatican II. In this, we have the admirable witness borne by Bishop Dolan and Father Chekada. Like them, we walk by faith and not by sight. Thus, we are fearless in calling the modernist ecclesiastical intruders who they indeed are intruders and impostors, wolves in sheep's clothing, thieves continuing the work of their ancestors who entered into the sheepfold through the window of infiltration so as to steal Catholic structures and institutions, to kill Catholic faith in the minds of men, and to destroy the salutary influence of the Catholic faith in society. We are fearless in identifying them like Pope St. Pius X as the most pernicious of the enemies of the Church. King David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If armies in camp should stand together against me, my heart shall not fear. If a battle should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. In the same way, if we walk in the true light, if we habitually life live under God's eye, we should have no fear but be confident even if armies of calumniators and the like should stand together against us. We must remember that in matters of faith and morals, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the world in, of this darkness the spirits of wickedness in the high places. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will put our trust in the name of the Lord, says King David. Yes, some put in trust in the chariots of their eloquence and a refined scale in sophistry, or the horses of their influence over unsuspecting minds may assault us with all sorts of calumnies, defamations, and accusations. In this, they learn help to the forces of the great accuser of the brethren, thinking they do service to God. Be that as it may, we must put our trust in the name of the Lord with a good and informed conscience so that while they speak evil of us, they may be ashamed who falsely accuse us. Dear faithful, we know from St. John that fear is not in charity, but perfect charity casted out fear, because fear hath sin, and that he that feareth is not in charity. May our hearts be so filled with charity that we may be able to honestly say, like King David, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Mary, Mother of Divine Providence, pray for us. Then of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.